Hi, my name is Bruce McConnell, and today we are going to do the first of a series of videos on locomotive, locomotive system training incorporated. And today's lesson is going to be on locomotive orientation. And this is what the agenda we're going to follow. We're going to determine what determines the front end and rear end of a locomotive. We're also going to discuss about what determines right and left side of a locomotive. We're going to discuss what determines the numbering position of components. And also we're going to ask the question, how is a diesel engine installed in a locomotive frame? We're also going to discuss what determines the front and rear of a diesel engine. What determines the right and left side of a diesel engine. And what determines the numbering position of the components. And here's what we're trying to get at. Why is all this information up here important to understand about locomotive orientation? Okay, okay the reason this is all so very important is this picture right here. This is the letter F. Under United States federal law, every locomotive shall be identified with the letter F. The letter F, as it's stated right here, it says FRA Rule 229.11, locomotive identification. A, the letter F shall be legibly shown on each side of every locomotive near the end for which identification purpose will be known as the front end. So this determines the front of the locomotive. Next slide, please. Okay, now, once we have the letter F designated, then we start to literally lock in all the components in the locomotive. For example, we have three areas of the locomotive car body we need to talk about. The first thing up here is we have a long hood. The long hood, literally where the blue line is, encapsulates the engine, main generator compartment, the air compressor compartment, and it's identified as the long hood end. Okay? Looking down at the same position facing the opposite direction, we have the locomotive cab here in red, and that's where the crew occupies, that's their home away from home. That's their work office right there. That's known as the cab. And then right in front of the cab, you'll notice we have a little area here called the short hood. So we literally have three areas of the locomotive being identified just from the letter F. Now, if we run this long or short hood forward, like most locomotives are, that will be designated as the front. So you'll have the front, that's what that letter F would be. You'll have the front, the cab, and the long hood of the locomotive. Now, most railroads, most, run short cab hood forward. Now there's an advantage of running a short cab hood forward. Visibility for safety is, is one of the most important things. You, when the operator, the engineer, and the, and the crew are in that locomotive with a short hood, they have about a 180 degree view of the road ahead of them and the sides. Okay? Now, if we run this locomotive long hood forward, if the F was down here, then this would be the front, long hood would be forward, the cab would be facing the rear, and the short hood would literally be at the back of the locomotive. The advantage of running a locomotive in with the letter F here, long hood, is for safety reasons as well. What happens is some railroads, and this is why it's really, really important, you've got to understand this is that these locomotives that run long hood forward, they offer you a great crumple zone. In the event a locomotive is going down the track and there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a massive semi-trailer on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the tracks, can't get across, if that locomotive hits that trailer, okay, this is going to take the brunt of it and the crew is much, much safer as opposed to the front end. However, the problem with this is, is you, only, you cut your 180 degree visibility in half. Now you only have 90 degrees from the front over to the side. So the engineer will have his half and the operating crew come in the conductor would operate on their half. So having the, the F on the front hood or excuse me the long hood has advantages. <clears throat> the letter F on the short hood has its advantages. It all just depends on what railroad wants to determine the letter F. So let's answer this question. What determines the front and rear of the locomotive? Well, the letter F, as we've already talked about, the FRA rule, what we just read a minute ago, determines the front and rear of the locomotive. And, and not even the rear, the front. The letter F designates the front. So, now, what determines the right and left side of the locomotive? I'm going to go back over here. Let's assume for a minute that we have, we're going to run short hood forward. With short hood forward, that's the front, this is the cab. Now, Here's the cool part. You're, in the, you're the engineer. You're sitting in the cab. You're facing the windows. 
So as you're sitting in the engineer's seat, looking forward, your front is its front. Your right is the right side of the locomotive, and your left side is on the other side of the left side of the locomotive. So we've established the front, the rear, the right side, and the left side of the locomotive. <clears throat> now, we've determined the front and the rear of the locomotive. We've also determined the right and the left side of the locomotive. And what determines the numbering position of all these components? Remember we said it was the letter F. So again, I'm going to walk back over here. The other significant thing you have to understand when you're talking about the letter F and the locomotive orientation is that the um, positioning, the numbering position. For example, these are traction motors. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I'm running short hood, that would be correct. Traction motor one, two, three, four, five, six. If I were to run this locomotive long hood forward, then everything would change. This would be traction motor number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Consequently, same thing up here on top of the locomotive. If I have cooling fans up here, if I run short hood forward where the letter F is right here, then that's going to be cooling fan number one, cooling fan number two. If this locomotive is equipped with, with the grids, dynamic brake grids, and there were two, then this, the front would be number one, and the, set, the one behind it would be number two. Now, if I turn this around, and the letter F is on the long hood end, then this would be cooling fan number one would be right here, cooling fan number two would be right here, dynamic brake grid fan would be number one here, and number two here. So as you can see, that letter F is very powerful as to front and back, left and right, and also the numbering of components. And you got to remember this, especially if you're inspecting that locomotive. Gee, well, that number two traction motor was a number five. That's why you have to know where the letter F is. Very, very important. All right. So that's what we have. The letter F determines everything. And now I'm going to walk back over here and we're going to talk about the diesel engine installed in a locomotive frame. Okay, now here's, we're going to go back to this picture in just a minute. But I want to ask a few questions. How is the diesel engine installed in a locomotive frame? What determines the front and rear of the diesel engine? Also, what determines the right and left side of the diesel engine? And what determines the numbering position of the components? So I'm going to go back over here to this new picture. This here is a picture of an EMD 645E3 blower type engine. Okay? And what we have to do with this engine, and if the letter F isn't confusing enough, what we've done is the builders of these locomotives have put the locomotive engine backwards in the locomotive frame. Okay? Why did they do that? Well, here's the front end of the engine. They look for landmarks, the governor, water pumps, oil pumps, blue bottle strainer housing, fuel return manifold, overspeed housing. All those components are located on the front of an EMD locomotive. Now, at the back, on this type of engine here, we have a roots blower, which is a supercharger, been called a supercharger. You have the blowers, one for the left, one for the right. You have the air ducts, and at the back of the engine, you have a great big flywheel. And that flywheel bolts to the main generator. And the main generator bolts to the back of the engine, and the entire engine is, is mounted in the locomotive frame backwards. Well, great. So now we've got to figure out how that's happened. Well, again, like I said earlier, I'm going to step out just a second. On the front end of the locomotive right here, you have lube oil and water pumps, and you have the governor, which is what I stated just a moment ago. At the rear end of the engine, you have the engine air inlet, which is the turbocharger, I mean the supercharger. Uh, you have the, the supercharger, the, uh, uh, the air ducts, and you also have the flywheel at the rear end. So, let's get this straight. Depending on where the letter F determines whether it's front and back for the locomotive, the, the car body, as well as front and back for the engine. Now, so we have this diesel engine right here. The cab of the locomotive is literally right behind here. Main generator is right here. So the front of the locomotive, if the letter F is on the short hood, is actually facing that way. Now, we have to look at the components over here. Okay? We weren't talking about the front and the rear, but also we talked about the numbering of the components. On the diesel engine, this is number one power assembly, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Right here, right front corner of the engine, but it's actually facing the rear of the locomotive car body. Over here on the opposite side, we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay? Now, this on most railroads, the diesel engine will fit in the locomotive backwards. However, what about the locomotive? We say, well, let's see, we have SD70 locomotives, SD70 Aces, which is the new modern stuff. We have the GE Evo engine, which is the new modern stuff. All the way, way, way back, you have, you have Alcos, and you've got early EMDs and some early GEs. The same thing applies here. By, by knowing which orientation we have or what component we have, lets us know that this, hey, this is number one assembly, not number nine. Or this is number five assembly, not number twelve. You gotta understand that because if you got a bad number number three power assembly and you don't know what components where, you might be on the wrong side pulling out the wrong power assembly, and that equates to a lot big dollar loss. And that does happen in the rail industry. Alright, so what we have here with, with a short hood in forward, the front of the engine is gonna face the rear of the locomotive. The only exception to that be would be if a switcher type locomotive where you would have long hood cab and no short hood at all. In that case, the letter F most times will be on the front, the long hood into that locomotive. That's about the only exception to that rule. So let's go over here one more time. Why is it important to understand locomotive orientation? Because, first of all, it's a federal law. The letter F determines everything. And once we determine the letter F, where that locomotive is, literally tells us where every component is locked in on that locomotive. That's why that is so important. Thank you.